Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we've got another review for you, this time of Hero Land, written by a good friend of the channel, Jace Glover. So thank you very much to you, Jace. Hero Land originally released back in early December 2019 in the US, but is only now finally set to release in Europe as well. The eShop description of the game promises retro-inspired RPG adventures, accompanied by a whimsical tale and excitement that cannot be forgotten. Those are strong statements, but can it keep its promise? Well, thank you to the developers for the review copy, and now, let's find out. The story in Hero Land is, quite frankly, bonkers. The basic premise is that you have come to an island that is the home of a theme park whose main attraction is custom-built dungeons, complete with branching paths, boss battles, and of course, loot. However, you are not one of the customers of the park, but instead you are a new employee, hired as a tour guide who everyone decides to call Lucky. The first guests you are assigned to guide are a prince and his faithful attendant. You find out early on the prince was recently demoted from heir apparent next in line for the throne all the way down to 18th in the line of succession. I'm sure you are thinking as I was, that's some insane politics right there. But the story and other characters you meet only get stranger from there on in, including an otter who can't decide if he's an otter or a man, and an old knight who wants to find a lady friend, even if she's already married. I don't want to ruin any of the story, but I will say that the writing overall is fantastic. I'll admit that at first I didn't like it much, but after an hour or so, the style and humour finally clicked with me. The game had me quite often laughing out loud as I played. Every line and character backstory is dripping with sarcastic humour, and the game continuously pokes fun at video game tropes, high fantasy cliches, and pop culture in general. Some jokes are a little overused, such as the numerous otter puns, although to be fair it is a relief to steer away from cat puns for once, but overall, it's very enjoyable. The gameplay itself is going to be the most divisive aspect of Hero Land. We're not reading through lengthy event text, the game is essentially a turn-based RPG dungeon crawler with a major departure from the norm. Remember that you are not one of the customers of this theme park diving into a dungeon, you are the tour guide. As such, it is your job to basically cheer from the sidelines and provide occasional help to keep your party alive and reach the boss. Your party of four will decide their own course of action unless you intervene. Your options as tour guide consist of telling a single character to use a specific skill, using an item from your backpack, such as a healing or status effect potion, or giving general strategy commands to the entire group. The group commands include targeting a specific enemy, using only standard attacks, using any special abilities at will, guarding or withdrawing from the dungeon completely. At first you are only able to select a command once every 12 or so seconds, but the time between actions decreases as you increase your tour guide level. Although you eventually are able to act quicker, there is still a lot of downtime where you as the player won't be able to do or control anything. So if you don't like turn-based combat to begin with, this game certainly won't change your mind in that respect. As tour guide, you are also asked to make other decisions before setting out on a run. This includes which guests will take part in the mission, what weapon they will use, which also dictates which role they will fill, i.e. tank, mage, healer, etc., and which items you will take with you in your very limited backpack. Within dungeons, it will also be your job to decide which path to take if your party comes to a crossroads. While guiding your team through a dungeon, you will have to also manage the customer's happiness levels. A specific character's happiness will increase or decrease based on what happens within the dungeon. Increases come from direct guidance, giving the character loot dropped by the enemies, or from landing a killing blow on an enemy. Decreases come from getting hit with a status effect or dying. As the tour guide, when loot does drop, you have the choice of keeping it for yourself or giving it to one of the customers as just mentioned. So managing happiness levels is actually pretty easy and straightforward. Because I'm a bit of a completionist, I found myself always keeping the first of any new item before giving out any regardless of their happiness levels. As a side note, any items you keep for yourself can be used to decorate your room on the island, but in my opinion, this is hardly an aspect of the game that's worth mentioning. At the end of a run, all of your characters will evenly split any experience, called Mon Coins, collected from killing enemies. Additionally, your relationship with the customers will increase, potentially unlocking their individual side quests. Lastly, their collective happiness will determine how much your tour guide level increases. A nice touch by the developer is allowing all characters who aren't in the party to receive a small amount of experience to help reduce potential level gap between characters. 
however the amount of experience given isn't really enough. One major problem with the system is that all of the missions that will move the story forward require specific characters, and you quickly find that the required characters are not a high enough level to keep going. You are then forced to replay previous missions over and over again to level up, and replaying missions adds very little value or fun to the game. To give credit where it's due, the developers did include the option to speed up the game whilst in battles to help mitigate the monotony. For me the biggest driver to continue playing was the wonderful writing and seeing all of the individual character side quests and main story segments. While there are some interesting and unique ideas, the actual gameplay does not consistently require enough from the player and it scores 11 out of 20. I only have a couple of complaints when it comes to controls. The first is that there are some menus where selecting what you want can be finicky, such as where to go on the main island. The second relates to any of the wheel-based menus, such as the group commands. In these menus, pressing right does not move the selector to the item on the right, but instead turns the wheel to the right, meaning you will actually move to the selection on the left. I mostly got used to this, but even after hours of play, still occasionally found myself moving the wrong direction. Other than this, it's a turn-based game that sees you simply navigating menus, and controls receive 15 out of 20. Much like the writing, the visuals took me a little while to get used to. At first I was not sure how much I liked the 2D Paper Mario-esque sprites, but as I played more, I started to notice how much detail and love went into crafting each character. The hand-drawn backgrounds are colourful and vibrant, with each new dungeon feeling unique and fitting the various themes such as underwater or a haunted house. While some of the enemy sprites are just colour swapped and reused, this is completely intentional and jokingly called out by the characters multiple times. The way the developers have animated the 2D sprites during various story segments is equally brilliant and only adds to the humour surrounding everything. The audio itself is quite good as well. The tunes playing whilst on the overworld map do a good job of making me think of theme parks and carnivals, and the battle music is more upbeat with some darker tones while still being reminiscent of a funhouse. The use of sound effects and music changes during key points in a dungeon or during conversations, and is done with great effect. While none of the game is voice acted, each character has their own sound effect to represent their dialogue, and I think this actually fits the game better than having full voice acting would have done. There are a couple of negative aspects worth mentioning though. First is that when you choose to speed up combat, the music and sound effects are all sped up with it, which can get fairly annoying as speeding it up also raises the pitch. Additionally, the sound effects attached to attacks and abilities are lacklustre and sound like they came from a free to use library. The visual style may take some getting used to, but fits the theme of the game and is a real treat when it clicks, and visual score 18 out of 20. Audio likewise fits the theme and tone of the game, and is mostly good with a couple of minor faults, and it scores 15 out of 20. Hero Land costs £32.99, €39.99 or $39.99. For this price you are getting around 50 hours of gameplay for the main story alone, with dozens more hours on top of that if you wish to finish the side quests for all of the 20 plus characters. Whilst this sounds like great value for money, it's worth noting that the hours to completion is arbitrarily inflated by the need to repeat missions many times over to grind experience. Given this knowledge and the fact that the actual gameplay is minimal, I'd say that it's priced a little too high. However, the writing alone kept me engaged and wanting to push through the grind, which is certainly worth something on its own. Value scores 15 out of 20. To conclude, Hero Land is undoubtedly a unique game. While the gameplay itself is minimal in some respects and can certainly be repetitive, the stellar and hilarious writing and beautiful presentation of the game were more than enough to keep me interested. If you are looking for a good laugh and something a bit more relaxing to play, then there is plenty for you to enjoy here. Hero Land scores an overall switch up score of 74%. A big thank you to Jace for writing this review for us, a stellar job as always. Please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just heard, and consider subscribing for all things Switch all the time. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.